Welcome to Aerospace Structures. Today we'll be discussing module one and we'll be learning how to model the stress concentration using fine elements. I have invited Shreyas Uday to describe this tutorial. Shreyas Uday has a master's in mechanical engineering and has extensive experience using CAD simulation packages. He specializes in the product design, development, and manufacturing. We'll learn how to construct the basic geometry first. We'll learn how to perform the basic fundamental modeling step by step using the ANSYS software. We'll learn how to model a plate on the uniaxial load to study the stress concentration. In this problem, we'll consider a plate on the axial loading. In this plate, we'll have a radius of 1.25 millimeters. We'll have a 10 Newton load applied on this surface. We'll also have this surface to be a 10 millimeter by two millimeter thick surface. The edge will be 10 millimeters, but this dimension will have very little impact on the results. The material is stainless steel. The material also will have less impact. I, will, I would like you to think about why is the case. If I were to switch this to aluminum, will the results change? Will the high stress at the hole Will that be changed because of a material change? Maybe that's something you can experiment and try to rationalize what could be happening there. And now we'll first learn how to go about the geometry. So I'll invite Shreya Zude to describe how we go about the geometry. Thank you, Uday. I would like to thank Professor Vinay Goel for this opportunity. So once you have ANSYS Workbench open, interface should look similar to what is being displayed on mine. Towards the left hand side, you have toolbox and toolbox. The most important thing would be analysis systems where you get so many different options to choose from. So for our first project, we will be doing finite element analysis of a 3D plate with a central hole on it. So for this, you will need to select static structural, navigate to static structural and double click on it. So once you do that in project schematic, you should have a window pop up which says and it has so many different options to choose from that is static structural engineering data geometry model setup solution and results so here i have made a separate set of video where i define the material model setup solution and i finally generate and plot the results so this video would be more focused towards defining the geometry so let us proceed to define the geometry for that double click on geometry and wait for ansys discovery to open up once you have ansys discovery opened up the interface would look exactly similar to what is being displayed on my screen here so here select a rectangle and from the center initiate the rectangle so dimensions are 10 cross 10 input 10 and press tab and input 10 again press enter you have a square of 10 cross 10 so now you need to pad it so let us select the option of pull and extrude it. The thickness of this square plate would be 2 up, press 2, input 2 and press enter. So now we need to define a central hole and to do that let us click on view, right click and select view, in view select the top plane. So once you have this we are going to define a circle at the center of dimension 2.5 mm diameter input 2.5 press enter again we need to create a pocket by which i mean we are going to remove the material by again selecting pull here on the top select the circle using your cursor pull down the circle all the way through the plate here once you have that you have your geometry ready save it and once you save it when you come back to the project schematic it's it should give you with a green tick mark in the a window and now that we went through how to create the geometry, we'll learn how to use the ANSI software to perform the analysis, and then we'll interpret the results. So for that, I'll wel welcome Uday again. Hi guys, I'm Shreyas, I'm your course producer. So today we'll be performing finite element analysis of a plate with a central hole. I would like to thank Professor Vinay Goel for this opportunity. So initially to perform the simulation, you need to have VMware installed on your system. Once you have VMware, open ANSYS Workbench. Once you open ANSYS Workbench, the interface should look similar to 
the one which is being displayed on my screen right now. So once you have this, towards the left hand side, you have the toolbox, navigate to static structural and double click on it. So when you do that in project schematic, you can see a window pop up, which is named A. So in this, we'll be defining the material, the geometry, the meshing and overall solution can be later found out using the same tab. So now initially to define the material, we double click on engineering data, which takes us to a separate tab here. By default, ANSYS uses material of structural steel, which we have the flexibility to change. And in order to change that, we need to go to engineering data sources where my cursor is pointing right now and click it. And these are the list of different materials which can be used. So for example, I have to, if I have to choose aluminum alloy, I click on general materials and scroll up and here is aluminum alloy. I add it. So once I add it, an icon of a book appears, which basically means that this material has been added to our original library of this project. So to view that, we need to click again on engineering data sources. So here we can see the new material has been added, but for this plate simulation, we'll be proceeding with structural steel. Hence we will have to delete aluminum alloy in order to delete that right click on the material or the aluminum alloy and click on delete. So once, once you have done this, we need to go back to original project interface by clicking on the project tab where my cursor is pointing. So once we are back here, we need to import the CAD model geometry to ANSYS discovery interface. So in order to do that, double click on geometry and wait for the application of ANSYS discovery to open. So once ANSYS discovery opens up, the interface should look similar to this, which is being displayed on my screen. So in here, in order to define and import the CAD geometry, we need to click on the three lines on the top left corner where my cursor is pointing and click on insert geometry. So once you do that, you will have to insert this geometry. So this is the same CAD model, which has been shared with all of you. So once you click single click on it and say open, it's going to import this geometry. So once that is done, the process of importing geometry has been completed. So now we can proceed to minimize this window and go back to original project schematic. So once back to original project schematic here, we need to proceed with the model where we will be matching the, the SCAD model, which we just imported. So in order to do that, we need to double click on model. So once you have the modeler opened up, the interface should look similar to what is being displayed on my screen here. Now in this interface, we need to define the mesh for this particular CAD model, which we have imported in order to do that in the outline, locate project tree in project tree, navigate to mesh and in mesh. In the details of the mesh, we need to change the element order from program control to quadratic, change the element size to 0.001 and generate mesh. So basically what we did was change the default element size of the mesh to make it more defined. So this takes a lot of computational time because the mesh is more well defined because the mesh is more defined. It gives more accuracy in the solutions, which we'll be plotting later on. So now let us proceed to define the boundary conditions. And in order to do that, right click on static structural where my cursor is pointing and in insert, click on fix it support, locate the bottom face of the plate, select it and click apply. And now let us apply force on the top surface of the plate. And in order to do that, right click on static structural, insert force, select the top face, apply the magnitude, change the magnitude to 10 newtons. 10 Newton. And once you do that, you can see the direction by default is pointing towards the top. So you don't need to change any direction. Once this is set up, we can proceed to solution and in solution, we need to select what are the conditions which will be plotting. So insert and in deformation, select total and again, right click in solution and in insert navigate to stress and select equivalent one mices. Now we have our mesh, we have our geometry, we have our mesh, we have our boundary conditions defined, and we have the requirement of total deformation and equivalent one mices stresses to be plotted. Now we can click on solve where my cursor is pointing right now and wait for the results. Since the mesh is very well defined, the computational time will be 
more than the default mesh. So once the simulation has been completed, we will be able to view the results or the plot in form of color gradients. And the scale for the color gradient has been provided towards the left of the screen here where my cursor is pointing. So to read the result, here we can see the maximum location of the stress of the equivalent stress is along these points of the hole and the total deformation has also been plotted and is represented by this color gradients. So here we can see and correlate how the deformation takes place. So red is the maximum deformation region, which basically means that the top surface of this plate has been deformed maximum. In order to see the deformation process or the stress variation process visually, we also have a feature where we can run the animation. In the bottom part of the screen, we have graph. In graph, we have animation and plus, and here press play, and you should be able to play the simulation similar to mine. And also for equivalent stress, this is how the stress varies. Once this is done, our simulation is complete. We can head back to the project schematic, and we can see we have all the green tick marks for these different steps. And now we can save this project. So thank you guys, and good luck with the project. Now that we've gone through how we model it, we can try to compare to the hand calculations. Uh, the stress concentration due to a load applied far field tends to be three times the stress field far field stress. In this case, the far field stress is 10 newtons divided, the force divided by the cross sectional area, 10 by 2. So it's really the formula given here, 10 divided by 0 0.01 uh, in meters now times 0 0.002 meters and then that gives me 0 0.5 megapascals the stress of the hole becomes three times that far field stress which is 1.5 megapascals now the results are not exactly equal to what we saw in ANSYS uh, but they're very close and that shows us that we've followed the procedure uh, very closely with that, I thank you very much and you have a wonderful day.